for the last 10 years, the, the efforts of, of the privacy community to push for the deployment of privacy enhancing technologies like encryption and like short data retention policies have been met with claims that those technologies would make things tougher for the cops and would lead to you know, pedophiles and terrorists and drug dealers getting away with their crimes. And the problem is that when you walk into a store and you're buying a new computer, you don't register as a criminal. You don't register as a terrorist. Everyone uses the same cell phones. Everyone uses the same laptops. We all have the same computers and we all use the same email services. And what this means then is that for law enforcement to have a relatively easy job of collecting data about a criminal, well, because we don't know who the criminals are ahead of time, it means we have to collect data on everyone ahead of time. We now live in a society where it is routine for companies to keep far too much data. It is routine that when you buy a brand new computer at the store, it doesn't include disk encryption turned on by default. This means that when you lose your laptop in a taxi or your cell phone gets stolen by someone on the street, they can probably look through it and get your data. And this is directly as a result of policies designed to assist law enforcement agencies. So there isn't this conflict between cybersecurity and privacy. What there is, is a fundamental conflict between the needs of law enforcement agencies and cybersecurity and the technologies that can do the most to protect individuals, business and government private information from cybersecurity threats also makes life more difficult for the cops. And really at some point, there's gonna to have to be a decision made uh, and the decision is this, who are we worried more about? The Chinese or the pedophiles? Because the technology that protects you from one, protects you from both. There's a lot of money to be made uh, working in the government space right now in cybersecurity. You know, if you look on the job ads online, there are websites that cater specifically to people with security clearances. Uh, and, and the people writing these ads, they don't hide the facts, right? They're not looking for people doing cyber defense. They're looking for people doing cyber offense. If you're a young person and you, you know, you're finishing high school, maybe you're, you're in university and you've been playing around with, with, with computers and you, you think computer security is an interesting topic, look, you know, the offensive side sounds more fun than the defensive side. And it's true, it is, right? Defense sucks. It's, it's really hard and you have to get it right 100% of the time. And the offensive guys only have to get it right once. They're a lot more glamorous. They're getting far more resources. Uh, and so you, when you look at these ads online and you see the absolutely insane amounts of money that people are making when they work for defense contractors who are then sending their people to NSA and to Cybercom and, and various components of various parts of the US government, you know, that is really attractive for young people. And, and you know, the, the only advice that I have uh, is you know think really hard before you before you get that clearance and go down that path they're paying the big bucks for a reason and it's because you know you may be doing things that are ethically dubious at best you're not going to be shooting someone with a gun but you'll be stealing data that might be used to later target people with drone attacks you'll be collecting data that will enable the government to collect even more information that, that will allow, allow them to spy on millions of people's telephone calls or gather emails. You'll be writing code that will allow the government to surreptitiously turn on people's microphones and webcams and break into, in, into servers and, and steal people's most private and personal things. These jobs have, have a, 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 moral, uh, a moral question mark associated with them. I do think that, that there is a human rights component to this simply because Many of the technologies that activists depend on now for their security have been designed with human rights in mind. The problem is, is that many of the technologies that pose the biggest threat to us have been designed without thinking of human rights. Whether it is Facebook's default collection of vast amounts of data, whether it's Facebook forcing people to open up their profiles, whether it's Google retaining vast amounts of information on where you browse, what you search for, and who you've emailed, these companies are creating gigantic data sets that governments can come and ask for later. And they've done that either without thinking about human rights at all or considering those issues and then ignoring them in favor of profit. It's the technologies that threaten us that are the ones that, uh, that, pose, that, 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 that have been forced on us without this human rights consideration. Uh, and unfortunately, those technologies are m far more plentiful, more impactful, and, and, and are the ones that we that most of us use on a daily basis. We live in a surveillance state. The government can find out who we communicate with, who we talk to,
who we're near, when we're at a protest, what, which stores we go to, where we travel to, they can find out all of these things. It's unlikely that's going to get rolled back, but the best we can hope for uh, is, a, is a system of law where the government only gets to use its powers uh, in the right situation. We don't need to have all of these companies retaining this data. We don't need to have this information sitting there for the cops to get later. Increasingly, consumers are using services provided to them for free. We don't pay for Facebook. We don't pay for Google. We don't pay for Hotmail or Twitter or any of these other communication services. We give them our data and in exchange they give us their, these services. And that business model of, of mining user data for a free service, it's fundamentally in conflict with privacy. It's very difficult for Google to not keep any data about its users, which would then protect those users when the government comes and asks for it later, uh, if the company has to mine the user's data to show them ads. We don't pay for so many of the online services we use, and as a result, these companies have instead turned to a business model that makes things so easy for the government. Facebook and Google are not trying to build a surveillance system. They're trying to build a business. Their business has the unintended consequence, the unintended side effect of facilitating easy, cheap, wholesale surveillance. We need to pay if we don't want to live in a surveillance society anymore.